All right, so I'm here in Peter's yard and I've got one. He's only about 40 feet away and look at this thing. Look at this little carnivorous bastard. Just plucking through the grass, waiting to leap up and attach to my face and start, there, look at that, look at that terrifying face. Attached to my face and start ripping flesh off. Probably carrying leprosy as well. God. You know, why don't the birds come after this thing? Anyway, hopefully by the time I get out here with the car, this thing's gonna fly off and go armadillo himself somewhere else. I'm gonna go, let's see if I can scare him off. Go on. Go on now. Get. Get and look at him fly. Oh no, he's stopping. He's gonna come back. Go on. Whew. Thank God he's skittish. I cannot believe it came back after that. This thing is absolutely fearless. Go on now. Go on, Rouse. Rouse. Oh my God, don't come at me. Go on. Cha 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 cha. Cha cha cha. <sighs> Terrifying. And I just have a bad feeling about that. Good morning. This is Bill from Curious Cars and Auto House of Naples. You know, I can't say it's really that much better. I mean, the truth of the matter is I didn't have to photograph this uh, car this morning. So I think if I did, I'd be back to the drippy, sweaty, shitty, moist feeling that comes from Florida humidity. And here we are in mid-October. And yeah, I know people say it really doesn't start getting better until November. But, um, but the dream survives. And it just pisses me off that I'm still this late into the year and haven't felt any degree of comfort yet from the weather not even a freak couple of days where it's just nice and cheerful it's just still humid awful terrible weather and this morning i it, it, there was an armadillo attack well he didn't attack me but he was going to attack me i'm pretty sure and uh, i don't know what ended up preventing him from doing so but uh Thank God he ran off into the woods. And then he came back. He came, you know, I ran him off once. And I thought, wow, okay, well, that'll handle it. You know, these things are skittish. Nah, he was back just a few minutes later. And uh, it was just a terrifying, terrifying morning. But he does seem to be gone now. Uh, there's no sign of him over there. Uh, nothing but the fire ants and some of the birds in the trees. So hopefully while I'm doing this video that the thing doesn't come running out of the woods and, and uh, assault me. And that bird was close. That bird was close. Anyway, um, we're just going to keep an eye out for all of it. And I'm going to get directly into this car. I've actually chosen this car uh, with the idea that this would be finally the unicorn in, uh, in Curious Car World, a short video. We'll see. And uh, one of the reasons it could be a short video is because I know... I frankly know as much about 39 Fords as I do about brain surgery on squirrels. So I had to research basically everything on it. I mean, I knew it existed. You know, I knew a few things about it, but not even remotely, you know, the, the stuff that I've learned about uh, the 80s or 90s Mercedes or, you know, GM platforms from the, you know, all that stuff that sort of I focus on. Uh, this is well outside the box. And frankly, that's fine because I do like uh, to challenge myself some times and learn a little bit more about a car that I really wouldn't have known that much about. And uh, that's why we're here today with this one. And I do have to say that the charm of this car has 100% won me over, which I did not think it would do. Uh, when I got in it last night to drive it home, I thought, you know, this is just, it's going to be a damn freak show. You know, the car is going to run like crap. It's going to strand me at the 7-Eleven. It's just going to be a miserable experience. And I am so happy to report that it's all been uh, exactly the opposite. It's been an absolute pleasure and a treat. So uh, let's just hop into this thing and I'll tell you what we got. Uh, this is a 19... That's a bird for crying out loud. 
This is a 1939 Ford Deluxe convertible coupe. Uh, and this one is a Resto Mod, uh, which is a name that you've uh, sure, you know, the real car guys out there, the ones who are, you know, buried in their magazines, it's like, you know, Resto Mod is not going to be an unusual word. But I mean, if you're sort of not really on the on the car front, you're just kind of a tourist, you know, which I am half the time, then you may wonder what exactly makes up a resto mod, and we'll kind of get into that as we go. Uh, there are a few different types of classic cars. Uh, actually, there's 30 million different types of classic cars, and there's a variety of different... Um, you know, genres and sub-genres and, you know, all sorts of different stuff that people get into in the car world. But uh, we're going to touch on a couple of them today. Uh, this one is a resto mod. Another thing that it could have been is a straight restoration. Now, a straight restoration would have taken a 1939 Ford like this one and made it in excellent condition exactly the way that it came from the factory and uh, that would be you know just a straight restoration a resto mod takes a 39 ford like this one and updates it in a way that makes it more drivable more you know in line with the way that a modern car runs and operates in terms of not just uh driving but also even in terms of safety i mean you know, this car came, it was one of the first Fords with all hydraulic brakes, which was a great safety feature at the time. But by today's standards, it's like stopping the Queen Mary. I mean, you know, if you have a panic stop, forget it. You know, you better plan a day ahead. Uh, well, this thing has been updated with four-wheel discs that stop on a dime, at least in terms of 39 Ford uh, verbiage. And that, that helps make the car safer. So we'll get into that. So anyway, you could have a restored car. You could have this. This, which is a resto mod, uh, which I presume is a conflation of the words restoration and modern. Uh, day two, those are becoming a little bit more interesting and more out there. And what a day two restoration is, is they take, it's more in line with a 60s or 70s car. Let's say you had a 69 Camaro you want to do a day two restoration on. So uh, you make the car with the accessories that you would have bought, you know, the day after buying it new. So uh, you take your 69 Camaro, you put... Um, Krager SS wheels on it because those are wheels that you might have put on in 1969. You put a tunnel ram on it, you put four barrels, all period correct stuff. Uh, and uh, th those are fun restorations to me because you can get into all kinds of different features, you know, not just the mechanicals, but also the car audio. Uh, you know, every the steering wheel, the accoutrements, uh, you know, all from 1969. And uh, that's what they call a day two, and those are kind of fun. And uh, then you can get into the insane guys. They call them the Pro Touring, uh, which takes the whole resto mod idea and ups it to, you know, you could take a 69 Dodge Charger and make it fully competitive with a 2021 Z28 in terms of suspension, engine, handling, performance, you know, take it to the autocross and do fast time of the day. Uh, that will cost you an absolute fortune, as you can imagine. But those are uh, pretty amazing cars. Uh, but uh, anyway, this one is a resto mod. Uh, you could also call it a street rod, which, uh, you know, maybe the resto mod is a subgenre of. I mean, all this it gets so tedious. Uh, it's done with with a very strong hint of the uh, Boyd Coddington style, uh, you know, with billet wheels and accessories and smoothed body panels and that sort of thing. Uh, Boyd Coddington is probably the most famous name in modern hot rodding. The poor guy, he's passed away now, but my God, was he an institution. And some of his cars were absolutely world famous uh, from the time he started, you know, releasing stuff in the 80s and uh, all the way through the 2000s. It's, it's just a shame the poor guy passed away. Uh, but I would say that this car is very much done in the Boyd Coddington style. It's very low. Uh, it's sleek. It, uh, you know, smooths out the metal in a lot of places and uh, hints on things that uh, he might have done as well, all the billet accessories and whatnot. And uh, while it is, you know, 
<laughs> like modern hot rods, it has the body and title of a 39 Ford. This is a steel-bodied car, which, you know, you can buy some of this stuff in fiberglass. You could, uh, you know, the 33 Ford, like the ZZ Top car, uh, you can build one of those from scratch. You don't even need to have a 33 Ford around. In fact, uh, a company called Factory 5, they've been making Cobra kit cars for years before they started uh, branching out into other stuff. And uh, in one of my prouder moments, I actually sold a Cayman S to one of the brothers who started Factory 5. So that was kind of a cool thing. Uh, but they make a 33 Ford hot rod out of fiberglass that you can build and drive around and it's just very very cool uh, but this is not and this is up to level or two because it uses a true you know this guy went out and found a true 39 Ford uh, deluxe convertible coupe and turned it into this resto mod so every panel on it is steel and uh, that is a uh, pretty big deal in the world of hot rodding uh, and while it is a 39 Ford it is very very far from its roots I mean it's other than the body uh, not much else exists of the 39 Ford that this thing was so uh, but before we get into it let's take a quick look at the year 1939 because it was a doozy <laughs> as they say uh, 39 was a uh, a very fascinating year. I mean, the biggest news of the year, you'd really have to say, was Germany invading Poland. You'd, you'd just have to say that. My dad was actually living in Warsaw at the time, so I have a bit of a special connection to that. Uh, he said the Stukas were terrifying. Uh, but in 1939, Germany blitzkrieged across Poland and, you know, took it over, essentially. They'd been making war moves for years, uh, but this was the big one. And England and France and Australia had already signed... Uh, treaties to defend the Polish, so they immediately had to jump into the war, and uh, it, there it was. So World War II officially began. Uh, the United States decided to be neutral in it, at least for the moment. They did some resupply stuff for the Allies, but they'd had enough of war and uh, decided to uh, sit this one out. It, obviously, it didn't end up that way, but they tried. Uh, but uh, anyway, so Germany did what they did and uh, provided movie fodder for Hollywood for for at least the next 70 years. I mean, Steven Spielberg made his damn career. Well, I guess that's not true. Maybe not Steven Spielberg, but certainly John Wayne did and <laughs> any others. So they're all very thankful to the Germans for <clears throat> creating some great movie stuff. Uh, also in 1939, Albert Einstein and a guy named uh, Leo Zillard, uh, they wrote a letter to FDR saying, hey, you know, we figured out nuclear fission. We've discovered we could make a giant friggin' bomb out of it. And uh, frankly, you guys should do that. So uh, he received that uh, FDR, that letter on my birthday, obviously, you know, many, many years before I was born, but on October 11th. And uh, it, then they went for it. It essentially started the Manhattan Project. It wasn't called that right off the bat, but that's what it became. So uh, thanks, Albert and Leo, for that one. You guys uh, made the uh, uh, the atomic bomb uh, as of uh, 1939. Uh, Gone with the Wind debuted in Atlanta. Uh, you know, very famous movie that's still to the, I think it's now, oh, it's probably been canceled now. It's probably racist or sexist or something, but frankly, I don't give a damn. I mean, it's just one of those things that uh, is in world history, certainly American history. Uh, Hewlett Packard was formed. Uh, a couple of guys started it in a Palo Alto garage uh, with 538 bucks, and their first product was a audio oscillator that they made to test sound equipment. And uh, their first customer, as things would work out for them, uh, was a guy named Walt Disney, who bought like eight of them to use on um, a movie called Fantasia, which was truly Mickey Mouse's only, you know, proper Oscar-worthy role. Uh, Lou Gehrig resigned from baseball or retired from baseball. He, of course, had uh, Lou Gehrig's disease, which was quite a coincidence. Uh, an earthquake in Chile killed 50,000 people. Uh, the Wizard of Oz premiered, so it was a hell of a year for movies. And uh, finally, in one of the most important bits of news of 1939, King George VI and his wife, Queen Elizabeth, tasted their first hot dogs. 
Uh, well, she tasted her first hot dog, as far as George knew. Uh, but uh, anyway, at a party that was hosted by FDR in the United States. So uh, there you go. There's the year in review, 1939. It was a big one, and that sets the scene uh, for which this car was foisted upon the world. Uh, and, uh, you know, even in its original form, this car was extremely interesting and uh, came out in very interesting times. Uh, the first of its kind, it was 37 when it came out, and of course they modified them year by year as they went. Uh, but um, Edsel Ford had been worried uh, that uh, Oldsmobile and Buick were getting the upper hand on Ford, that they had these sort of mid-level cars between the Chevys and the Cadillacs that Ford did not have at the time. And uh, they were getting a lot of traction, they were getting a lot of buyers. Uh, Edsel was a pretty sharp cat, pretty cool guy, uh, very different from his father. He had style, he had grace, he had, you know, breeding, and uh, he decided that they wanted to come up with a car that would sort of bridge the gap between the most expensive Ford and the cheapest Lincoln. So, um, in 38, they introduced the sort of upmarket Ford called the Deluxe. Uh, and it ran alongside the Lincoln Zephyr, which was a much more expensive. The birds. And they're there, right there, overhead. And drop some bombs on my head. Um, anyway, it ran alongside the Lincoln Zephyr, which was pretty hot, pretty cool car, but also kind of expensive. And the Deluxe gave some inkling of that to uh, the more common man who was on a different budget. And as a result, it sold very, very well. Uh, it was as equipped as the best equipped Fords, but even with a few extra features. And uh, it worked out extremely well. Uh, the front end was very reminiscent of the Lincolns, the Zephyrs. Uh, people enjoyed that. and they they snapped them up. Uh, the pointed hood, the vertical grills, um, you know, it was just a really attractive car. People took notice and they bought them. So uh, I'm going to pause for a minute, get my crap together, and then we're going to start uh, getting into this particular car. Bear with me. All right, so now we've got planes overhead to go with all the goats and armadillos and birds and all the other crap that happens around here in Peter's driveway. And Peter, I don't even know if he's home. Uh, he's probably not. I know he was gallivanting around Europe for a while, uh, the, uh, you know, foisting himself on women half his age. And uh, last I heard, he was in Cozumel. Uh, again, having a date with some lovely young lady. <laughs> I won't say quarter of his age, but certainly half his age, who I'm sure uh, it just really thought he was a nice guy. You know, she was there for his wisdom and his grizzled good looks. And, you know, she just, she had no interest at all in uh, in the wallet on his back pocket. And uh, that uh, is the way it goes with Peter. So hopefully he's off somewhere having a fantastic time uh, in a climate much better than this one and uh, truly enjoying himself. I really do wish that with all of my heart for uh, Peter. But anyway, look, let's just dive into this car. So uh, you've got what essentially was an upmarket trim, uh, this uh, convertible uh, coupe deluxe from Ford. Uh, it was the last year, 39, for the rumble seat. I think one of the coolest features uh, ever put in an automobile. Uh, it has tons of room inside and extremely elegant, modern for its time looks that were reminiscent of the much more expensive Lincoln. So all in all, a pretty damn good place to start uh, for a street rod or a resto mod and uh, this guy who put this one together uh, decided the same and here it is uh, the windshield was chopped uh, you can see how it looks kind of short and that of course is a classic hot rotting thing to cut down the windshield they put in custom glass uh, they probably shaved three or four inches off this thing uh, it would have been much much taller uh, the body was smoothed by that they you know they got rid of some of the trim most of the trim on the car, the door handles, uh, other bits. Uh, one thing that's interesting is they left the, and when I first saw it, I thought, wow, that's kind of an oversight. Why didn't they take that off? You know, this chrome strip that's running uh, from the front of the hood down along the car to the back. And then I just sort of did some reading on these, and that was a very... 
the proper, I don't know what, it, a famous styling feature of these cars. So it's, it's you know, like the portholes on a Buick. It's, uh, it's an important feature. And I suspect that's why the people who built this car decided to leave it. And uh, it uh, is one of the things that makes a 39 Ford a 39 Ford. Um, but the windshield was chopped. They fitted it with the, the company that makes it, I think it's called Carson. Uh, that's a custom convertible top, which is just fabricated for this car. Uh, uh, you can see it fits perfectly. Uh, I originally had it off, but then I was afraid it was going to rain or, you know, who the hell knows. So I thought, ah, what the hell, leave it on and uh, we'll drive it around this way. And uh, it's just too awkward for me to remove by myself and then get back on. So I'm just going to leave it on top of the car. Uh, but it fits perfectly. It's got that cool little rectangular back window and uh, is a very, very neat feature. Uh, you can also see there's no door handles, there's no emblems, uh, there's no bumpers, there's no holes for any of those things. Uh, the original steel body was modified to make it very smooth and uh, that is in the style of uh, Boyd Coddington. Uh, instead of, you know, look, they, this is part of the resto mod thing. Uh, if it was riding on the original chassis that came on a 39 Ford, it would have these transverse leaf springs front and back. I mean, it's not far removed from Model T. Uh, even though this was kind of an upmarket Ford at the time, it shared the platform with its more, you know, generic, uh, stable mates and that had to change if this car was going to be what it became today, which was a very drivable street rod. So there's a company called Fat Man. You have to like that. I believe they're out of North Carolina. And they build custom frames for older American cars. And they use modern suspension components. So this guy went to Fat Man. He bought a frame for this car. Uh, it used a Mustang II uh, front suspension, which they added coil springs to or coilovers. And uh, it is part of what makes this thing such an absolute joy to drive. You know, when I, uh, Mustang two suspensions, I've heard about those for years in street rods. And I, just, I mean, they couldn't have made that many Mustang twos. How many are going around these days? Uh, but I presume somebody sort of remanufacturing the, uh, the design for Met cars. You could probably buy a new, I don't know this, but it's just a guess. You could probably go buy a new Mustang two suspension and uh, use it in your street rod. You don't have to rely on finding some old Mustang two in a junkyard, but uh, yeah, Maybe, who knows? Um, it, uh, it continues all the way to the back where uh, it doesn't have an independent rear, but it has trailing arms that make it much more modern. You've got the four-way disc brakes. Uh, you've got an eight-inch Ford rear with posi traction. Uh, and uh, these gorgeous billet specialties rims. I looked them up. At first, when I looked at them, I thought they were Boyd rims, you know, Boyd Coddington, but they're not. Uh, they're done by a company called Billet Specialties, also out of North Carolina, I believe. And they started making this kind of stuff in the 1980s and grew exponentially and uh, became one of the ultimate suppliers for street rods. And they make an incredible product and they charge incredible money for it. So uh, the rims on this car were, I'm sure, well north of 500 bucks a piece. And uh, they look it, uh, especially with those vented discs behind them. Uh, very, very cool stuff. Uh, I tell you what, look, we'll get a, it's got a crate motor, it's got an overdrive trans, it's got power steering, power brakes, air conditioning, heat, uh, custom radiators, billet pulleys, brackets, demon car. We're going to get into all this stuff. Uh, but the whole point of it is that it does not drive like your average 1939 Ford. I mean, if you took one of those down the road, as good as you might look, as well restored as it might be, uh, you're going to feel like you're driving an ox cart that has no horsepower and jars your spine every time it goes over a bump. Uh, this is a much more modern way to go down the road. So uh, let's just hop into it. I'm going to pop open the, uh, the hood to start. And to do that, there's supposed to be a little pull under here. I should have checked this. Oh, God. Oh, you know, I'm old for this. Oh, God, that really hurt. And I've got a Charlie horse somewhere. I should just be pausing this to do. Why can't I get in here? I can feel it. Oh, there it goes. Okay, good. 
All right, there it is. So here is a ZZ4 crate motor. This is from Chevrolet Performance. So uh, this is an engine that you order directly from Chevrolet. It's got an iron block, aluminum heads, uh, puts out like 350 horsepower or so. Very, very tweakable if you want to. Uh, they can be tuned up to five, 600 horsepower. Uh, not sure how far they took this one in terms of cams. They probably just left it the way it was uh, because this guy just wanted it to be the perfect driver. Uh, you can see it's got um, uh, a Holly four barrel done by uh, Demon Carburation. Uh, it's got all of these billet accessories, which uh, again was in style at the time. So you've got a polished aluminum AC compressor with a billet pulley, uh, ditto on the um, alternator, ditto on the uh, water pump pulley and you know whatnot. It also has an electric fan, uh, which of course helps it run cooler. Uh, you can see it as uh, Willwood brakes there. That's, um, you know, kind of the, eh, the whole thing has kind of a cool modern brake kit. Uh, that company's been making upgraded brakes for street rods and muscle cars for many, many years. And it's just done to an extremely high level. Frankly, the guy who owns this car, who owned it, passed away not that long ago. He was a very old guy. Uh, this car was built in like 2005, and you could just tell that it was the guy's pride and joy, that he loved it, that he drove it. Uh, has 18,000 miles since the uh, Resto Mod restoration. I mean, that's actually a shitload of miles for putting on one of these things, and it's a testament to how good it drives. Uh, but obviously, for the last five to ten years, the car just hasn't had the level of attention uh, that it frankly deserves and you know that's apparently now reflected in the price of the car I mean I, you couldn't put this car together for a hundred grand you couldn't do it. it it would just cost you more than that if you could even find a steel body good enough to build it anymore and uh, some guy is gonna get very lucky with this thing in terms of it just needs all the little foo-foo stuff to get brought back up to where it should be uh, I would get rid of these crazy looking purple stripes I'm not a big fan of those they look frankly kind of 90s to me and I don't love them. I don't know what I do instead, but I definitely would get rid of those. Uh, but man, it's just all the fun stuff on this car that's left to do uh, to bring it to a, uh, a more modern look and uh, you know bring it back up to the level of build that it had. Uh, there you can see the uh, uh, very fancy looking control arms down there and that, um, you know, that's not what a Mustang II came with. Those are uh, coilovers and, you know, fancy bushings, that sort of thing, all designed to help make the car ride very well while still being low. Uh, power steering, something this car never came with. Power brakes, another thing it didn't come with. And uh, all of that is meant to make it a terrific driver. Uh, it's got a painless wiring harness, which is a company that makes, uh, you know, if you want to put that as Chevy motor in a Ford or <laughs> Let's say you want to put a Chevy motor in a Jaguar. Uh, that company makes kits that will make that possible uh, in a way that it's just sort of snapped together. You don't have to spend hours and months and hire Stephen Hawking to do your wiring for you. And, uh, you know, there is so much neat stuff in the hot rod world available to people. It just makes it fun. Uh, instead of uh, doing all kinds of intriguing customized mods, you can just spend money instead, and that works out great. Uh, there you see a big digital uh, MSD ignition box. Uh, the uh, digital ignition, of course, makes it, um, yeah, you know, it's not quite up to like fuel injection level, but makes the car very, very turnkey and uh, quite a good looking, probably a billet specialties. No, well, that is a K and N actually, uh, air cleaner uh, riding on top of that polished aluminum holly. So anyway, everything looking good under the hood. You can see the uh, very fancy grill uh, that was uh, particular to these deluxe models at the time, uh, pointed at the front with the uh, vertical slats, uh, the incredibly cool uh, front pointed hood, and uh, this was one of the first cars Ford made that did away with the uh, dual opening shutter hood style thing where you kind of opened uh, panels on either side. It had a full proper hood in the modern style uh, that you could lift up to access the motor. All very cool stuff. Uh, there you see those flush mounted lights. Uh, they're not factory either. They're uh, quite cool, and they've got the uh, turn signal and marker lights built into them and uh, otherwise this is hot rotting that was done to a very high level when this car was put together 
those rims are just absolutely gorgeous. You see the running boards uh, are uh, custom. They're not um, the ones that they came with. They're sleek and they look pretty damn cool. Uh, without door handles, you know, how the hell do you get in? <laughs> There's no way. Well, they've done a thing. Hopefully you're not wearing polished shoes uh, where you can go under here and there's a little, there it is, electric release that you press and it pops open the door. And then we see the interior, which has also been done to an extremely high standard. Um, this is pretty neat. It uses a very customized 1956 Oldsmobile dashboard. So gone is the original dash from the 39 Ford. In is this trimmed, slimmed, cut, you know, channeled uh, Oldsmobile dash with uh, digital instrumentation. Custom door panels and leather, uh, custom billet. Uh, these all need to be polished, but I mean the expense of them. Uh, this is how you open the door, pushing down on these guys. Uh, it has power windows. There's a little switch hidden down in here. And again, that's the kind of stuff you didn't get on 39 Fords. Uh, the pedals, all quite cool, very custom. The switches, the poles, uh, they put in a tilt steering column, uh, not sure what kind of car that came out of, and a billet steering wheel uh, with a leather grip. Uh, also the seats, uh, which are beautiful, they're uh, called ultra leather or some such like that, uh, but they're dual power uh, with recline. So let me reach under there and see if I can point that out. Yeah, there you go. So you've got power reclining, power seats on this car. So it's like a Lincoln town car. I mean, it's just very, very cool and done to an extremely high standard. Uh, in the back, uh, your Canadians, I don't know how chipper they're going to be. It's going to, you know, the same legroom you saw in that Hyundai Equus. Uh, those little trim things there, uh, they push into place when the convertible top is off to finish the uh, area. So I just kind of threw them in the back and there they are. And let me see if I can reach back here. Oh, God. Everything's hard. This clip's in place. Ugh. All right. I don't know if I got this, but let me see. I think we push at the back like a Mercedes fuel door. Ow! Ow! Oh, my God. I almost decapitated my arm there. If that's a word, maybe severed is better. Uh, but anyway, there's the rear rumble seat. So, uh, you know, this shows me exactly how cool people were in the 1930s. Uh, let's say you've got a couple of kids, you've got a couple of Canadians. Man, you don't want them inside your car with you, chatting at you, yapping at you. So you just stuff them back here where the trunk might be. And uh, they're actually going to be fairly chipper. I mean, they might get a bug in their teeth at 110, but who cares? They're your backseat passengers. What difference does it make to you? And uh, otherwise, uh, it's also a nice place to have a little lovey moment for, uh, you know, a couple on a date night. So uh, there it is. Pretty cool rumble seat area. Uh, I understand you can remove these cushions if you want it to be a trunk. So if you're going to a car show or something, I guess you could throw your gear in the back. But um, very, very cool that they kept that. And very cool that this was also the last year of the rumble seat for Ford. I also love the uh, sloping uh, rear on this. That was part of that rare uh, convertible coupe option, as they call it. I think it's just beautiful, almost like a fastback. And uh, these little bejeweled looking uh, minimalist taillights coming in at the bottom and the way it all comes together. And you see a couple of uh, uh, twice pipes coming out underneath them. So very cool, very beautiful, and uh, just neat to look at. So let me get that back down. Uh, under here, I believe, is where the gas cap is. It is. There it is. I don't know what that ground's for, but it's there. And uh, there's where you put the fuel in. Let me crank it up and then walk behind so you can hear the uh, crate motor purring. And as a GM guy, I do appreciate that it has a small block Chevy. It has a very nice growl to it. And you can hear, not too radical of a cam at all. Uh, just a good driving cam. Uh, obviously has some kind of turbo mufflers or some such, which gives it a healthy growl. Uh, but this thing is set up for very comfortable driving. And uh, that to me is a big part of what makes this car cool. Uh, so anyway, I'm gonna leave it there for a moment, pull it up, get my stuff in it, and uh, then we're gonna take this thing for a ride. All right, so let's drive this thing. Again, with the uh, door release under there, very cool. 
let's hop in. Uh, the passenger door release, there's one for you here, so if I press that, it, well, it releases it if you're pulling on it, which I'm not, so. Uh, but anyway, you've got your uh, passenger door release there. Uh, and it's just incredible to me, and this is where the expense of uh, resto modding and street riding come into play is how civilized this car is and you may not immediately appreciate it when you're just hopping in and driving it's just a street rod and you know it's no more comfortable than your average 1978 uh, you know dodge fury or plymouth fury but it, it's to make a 1939 feel like that uh takes a shocking amount of money in engineering so anyway let's fire it up there's that small black fire into life with a very nice growl. Oh, God, is that ever cool. And uh, in this uh, custom Oldsmobile dash, there are the uh, digital gauges. You see, you've got your fuel gauge. Get used to that going down. It's in a percentage. Uh, your voltmeter, your oil pressure, your water temp, uh, your Odo. There you see 18,000 miles, which frankly is a shocking amount of miles to put on a car that, like this that's built. You just don't see that. And uh, that shows you that this guy put this thing together to drive. And uh, there's your miles per hour in the middle and your bar graph tack right above it. Uh, over here you've got your lights, you got your wipers, those cool little suicide looking things that of course had to be trimmed and custom fabricated to fit the lower windshield. Uh, you can see the uh, quality of the hardware used on the top, these machined knobs and uh, you know all of that is custom as is the uh, headliner on it. Uh, very very cool. Uh, even the screws have been painted properly. You know all of this again had to be custom made to fit the small dash. Uh, you got a uh, center view mirror going back to that little window that Dalton didn't bother to clean up too well. And uh, this, I think, is just a black panel. If it lights up with anything, I haven't seen it. Uh, the ashtray, I haven't actually been able to open, so you know, there it pushes forward, but it doesn't work very well for me. Uh, over here, you've got a lighter. Thank God they put that in, although this guy obviously didn't smoke, but it didn't help him keep going. And then a uh, little compartment here uh, where you can get it. This is where the um, uh, control when the air suspension was working. I don't think it is right now, uh, but you would have been able to push up, push down, and make the suspension raise or lower the car. Uh, you've also got a tilt wheel, nice and modern. Uh, it's got um, good sounding horn and has obviously been billeted, but when you look at it, it all needs to be polished and freshened up. And to me, that's kind of the fun stuff on a car. So all the heavy lifting on this thing is done. Uh, you just need to bring it back to the glory that it had, you know, 10 or 15 years ago. Uh, down here are the controls for the uh, vintage air uh, and heat, apparently. So uh, even air conditioning and the windows, look at that, power windows. I think that's absolutely insane and a, a sign of very, very cool engineering in this car uh, when it was put together. All right, let's go for a spin. Uh, now with the suspension the way it is, all the air is out of the shock, so it's essentially on the bottom, uh, which looks terrific, by the way. I mean, it looks really good having the car riding that low, uh, but unfortunately, you get a, do get a little bit of tire rub on the uh, frame rails as you're driving along. Uh, but I think, again, one of the great testaments to this car, and I think you'll see it as we drive it, is even with the suspension absolutely bottomed out, uh, the thing still rides better than any of the lowered mini trucks that my stupid but friends drove in high school. Uh, those things, you'd have to go to a chiropractor uh, after a trip to the next town. Uh, this thing, even with the suspension at the absolute bottom, uh, I feel like I could drive it to Cleveland and still feel pretty comfortable. How's the fan going? Get a little bit of AC cooking on. And wait for these gates to open. Actually, I tell you what, I'm just going to pause. We'll pick it up at the end of the road. Uh, let's see if I can get this before we go. This is a cool spot. This is where they've hidden the radio back here. Oh, God. Not quite air supply, but not much better. Um, you know, everything on this car is really, really trick. And uh, you, know, you hear those tires squealing. That's uh, two inches in the suspension and that's gone. A little bit of air, unfortunately, they just leak out. And it's just a 
joy. I cannot even begin to tell you how modern this car feels going down the road. I mean, the suspension is nice. I mean, the thing is absolutely in the weeds, and the suspension still feels nice. You still have travel. Uh, the steering, tight, crisp, power, very lovely to grab. The brakes feel terrific. They stop the car in a hurry. This is one of the best driving street rods. Not that it's a genre I have too much experience with, but I've been in a few, and none of them have come close to this level of feeling sorted. Uh, it's just an absolute joy to drive this thing. And I have no doubt that the guy who put it together, that is precisely what he had in mind. He wanted to be able uh, to hop in this car, turn on the air conditioning, drive it, you know, eight towns away to a car show in complete and total comfort, and then drive it back. And uh, that is an extra level of engineering and money spent, and kudos to him, the poor God rest his soul fellow who put it together uh, in a way, you know, most of these cars are just show queens. They show up to the shows on trailers, they get put back on trailers at the end of it. You drive the thing a hundred yards and something's gonna break. This thing you could drive on the freeway to the next state. Uh, it's gonna do it. You can see the temperature always hovers right around where it should be, that big electric fan and radiator. Uh, the steer, it's just so well sorted and so nice to drive. And uh, from what I read, that uh, that the uh, 4ZZ, 3ZZ motor is just an absolute bulletproof. Uh, again, and I'm sure that's why he selected it, you know. Moderate horsepower, incredible longevity, more than enough to get the thing moving down the road and sound great. And uh, not too much that it starts to become unreliable or undrivable. Uh, just a perfect street cam. Uh, it's got the 700R4 transmission, so it's got overdrive, so you're not turning, you know, 5,000 RPM at 70. I, I don't know what the rear end gears are in it. They feel less radical than a 410. I'm going to bet they're somewhere between 323 and 373. And uh, there it is. The car is just absolutely set up to drive. And uh, that, after all, uh, is kind of the real joy of one of these custom cars. You know, you drive around, people give you the thumbs up. Uh, it's just great fun. It's just great fun. And uh, this one does it flawlessly. So uh, I'm going to shut up now. We'll do a little bit more driving so you can feel that. Uh, we got more fun stuff in the pipeline and uh, really appreciate you having a look. This one is for sale at Auto House of Naples. Uh, on the web at autohousenaples.com. On the phone at 239-263-8500. Thank you so much for having a look. Really appreciate it. And we will see you with the next one. Take care.